Calvin. Yes, Callum. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. How is America, first and foremost? Love it. It's, it's wonderful. It's the land of the free, the home of the brave. So how long have you been here now? Uh, just over a month, I think. And, you know, we, 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 I'm, obviously I'm here for the election. Yeah. And that's literally all everyone's talking about right now. Oh, yeah. As an outsider looking in, because I think sometimes, you know, you can actually get a better perspective that way. Mm. What have you noticed and what, what can you feel how the country's feeling right now? Yeah. Uh, there is a lot of optimism. There is a lot of hope. There's a lot of joy. Uh, there's there's a, a lot riding on this election. I think people see that. Also, there is a bit of pessimism too. I think people think uh, things are worse here than they are. And I remind them of how bad things can be. But I say, have you seen what we're doing back home? It's dire. And then they're like, okay, all right. It's not as bad as we thought it was. So perhaps that's good for them. But also just to let them know they've got to stop this Marxism rubbish because we know where it ends. In our country, we've just, well, we haven't, but people have just elected the new leader of the Conservative Party, which is supposed to be the centre-right party. What's the first thing they do on announcing her? Celebrate the skin colour, her skin colour, the fact that she's black. This is diversity, inclusion and equality at the heart of the party of government, not the current party of government, but the party of the longest serving party of government in the history of our country. And what, what are they celebrating? That they've installed a, another female leader, and this time the first black leader. Neither, neither of those things is conservative. And so Marxism has just taken a grasp of everything, even the small things, so even the so-called conservatives concede ground and don't realise it. I suppose the, you mentioned the pessimism there. I suppose when you look at where Europe's going, or yeah. where the UK has gone, I suppose you can kind of understand the pessimism from one side here, because, you know, the Second Amendment is a huge thing. The Americans love their guns, but they also love the freedom their guns bring. Yeah. I, remember, I remember back in, during the lockdown days, some of the most heavily armed states had the least restrictions. Absolutely. Because, because what are you going to do? Yeah, guns, guns offer an individual that protection. Yeah. You can't tread on me because I can blow your kingdom come. Yeah. I suppose, do you think that's where the pessimism's coming from? That we've, I'd say the UK's fallen, mm. fa fallen further so far. They can see they have further to fall. Mm. Do you think that's where it comes from? No, I think the pessimism comes from not when they when they don't see that, when they think things are bad here. And then when they see the bigger picture, I think that's when the optimism comes in because they think, actually, we've got a, ch a fighting chance here, whereas Europe is mostly lost. There's no democratic means to take it back. And of course, yeah, having the, holding on to their guns is fundamental. And most Brits at this point have come to the conclusion, oh, guns, bad, gun violence, you know. Why would you want to say, as a Christian, that people can have offensive weapons? It's like, well, it's not an offensive weapon, it's a defensive weapon. It's, it's the only gift that these people have against a tyrannical government. What do we have? Nothing. And so if the next time a tyrannical government tells us we're not allowed to leave our homes or see our loved ones or walk within three metres of another human being or show our bare faces in public, what are we going to do about it? Roll over again, probably. What else can we do? Whereas the Americans have a fighting chance. They kept their guns and they kept their freedom because of it. It's important for, for the people, for the citizens, to have some defence mechanism. So ultimately, you know, as a father mm -hmm. of the church, mm -hmm. what is the case for Christ when it comes to this election? I mean, oh, we can see over your shoulder right now. You know, you're, you know, you're, you're clearly supporting one candidate. What is the case for Christ when it comes to to voting for Trump? Well, I would say every Christian has to vote with their conscience and has to vote as Christ-like as they can. And that doesn't mean looking for a Christ-like person. It doesn't mean looking for the perfect person, because there is none. We all, as Christians, strive towards holiness. We strive towards goodness, but we are not good. And so there is no one who is ideal for us to vote for. And so what we have to look at is how we avoid voting for evil. And when there's a party that is explicitly saying that they want to promote liberal abortion, they want statewide, national, federalized abortion, when there's a party that's saying they're against free speech, you know, we've got, so we've got Kamala in favor of abortion, we've got Tim Waltz saying that, oh, well, not all free speech is free speech, and like, essentially saying that he doesn't care about the Second, or the First Amendment, sorry. Um, and we know they would clamp down on guns. They posted, Joe Biden, or the White House posted a thing on Twitter just this week saying we need to ban assault weapons. What's an assault weapon? It's a very ambiguous term that could mean anything. So they're against the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, and they're against the 
the sanctity of life. So we have to avoid them at all costs. They are evil. And so what is the least worst option? Well, it's the Republicans. They're not necessarily conservative these days. They are, relatively speaking, liberal from five minutes ago, right before the liberals went far left. But they're not as bad as, as the wicked on, on the far left. Uh, so we have to prevent mass death by voting for the Republicans, I believe. Um, Donald Trump is a Christian and he's surrounded by Christians. Uh, J.D. Vance is a Catholic. This is fantastic. This is good. Um, I know they have Christians praying for them. I've been one of the Christians praying for them. And so as long as they keep that up, there's hope, there's faith and there's love. Whereas on the other side, there's death. So it's quite a clear election, really. Now, it's interesting you say it's quite a clear election. So on my journey through America, I've been through New York, Philadelphia, DC, and then here we are now in Michigan. I was driving through Philly the other day and I saw one of the billboards that wasn't, that wasn't a lawyer billboard. It was like, oh, that's a nice change of pace because that's all the billboards are here. Mm. And it was, it was an advertisement for Kamal Harris. And it was Catholics for Harris. We see advertisement in England. Advertisement. Am I? I've always said advertisement. Americanism. Oh, good. <laughs> Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. <laughs> okay, so advertisement. I saw an advertisement, Ooh. Father, uh, in going, driving through Philadelphia. And it was Catholics for Harris. Yes. It's what are you thinking? It's demonic subversion. So what happens is George Soros and these evil people flood loads of money in to key pastors and priests and areas and try to say, well, you can, you know, you can still be a Christian and vote for the evil. When of course you can't. Like there's, there's a Catholic for abortion and stuff like that. You can't be Catholic and support abortion. The two things are contradictory. But the evil people in the world want you to think that they can do because they want to disrupt good. They want chaos. And that's how the enemy works. And so Catholics for Harris is just more of that. Now, do you think when, because I mean, th there are people who genuinely think they are Christians and sure. Catholics voting for Harris. Right, yeah, no, I should point out, not everyone is a deceiver. Some people are just deceived, and that's important. Okay, that was the point I was going to get to. I was going to, do, do you think that they are blissfully ignorant rather than evil? Yeah, the, the evil is the George Soros's, the Bill Gates's, the people who are flooding the, the, the world with money to get their own way. The people who are voting for Harris who still think they're Christian or Catholic, they are the ones who are deceived by the deceivers. And so their Christian friends around them need to help them and show them the truth they love. So let's move on to Trump. Okay. You met the man. Yeah. You are you're kind of a British ambassador here now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, but uh, it is a shame to see the Labour Party in government just lambasting him and sending their activists out here to support Kamala Harris because they want more commies in because they're commies themselves. Marxism supports Marxism. Um, so yeah, if I could be a positive uh, influence for the British-American relationship, great. What was he like? What was it like to actually meet him? Because like, I think we were talking about this last night, you know, you have um, you almost spent some time behind closed doors, was it? Or, or, or where, where basically the cameras weren't on. What was it like? Give us an honest opinion of Trump. Uh, great, I thought he was just a down-to-earth, humble guy. And I know that's weird because people think he's like this big character, but yeah, <laughs> got to do it. You know, nobody does uh, Trump better than me. Church, <laughs> Amer I, I am, I am Trump, and uh, the most humble man in the world. I'm, I'm humble, maybe the humblest. <laughs> on if it was a competition, I would win. Yeah. But I'm, I'm humble. So yeah. <laughs> he does the showmanship really well, but person to person, man to man. He's generous with his time, he's charitable, and you know, I've met some politicians who put on a good show, and then when you speak to them, it's just glass eyes, and they're just looking around for the most important person to speak to, or they, they can't wait to move on. Trump is just there, he'll engage with you on, on a human level. That's, that's a skill you can't teach, and I think that's, that's very important for any leader to have, that emotional intelligence. He makes you see, feel seen, which is, which is very good. What did he say to you? I won't repeat what he said, because I wasn't there as a journalist, I was there to pray for him, and I think I believe in trust like that, so I think I'll keep what he said private. But I was saying to him that we're looking to him and to America as you know, as Brits, we're looking um, for them to stem the tide and to turn this woke Marxist nonsense around and return the West to Christendom. And you, and you, you genuinely feel he was honest in in what you got from him. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah.
Yeah. He's the kind of guy I could see. You know? I understand why people want to play golf with him. Like I could see sitting down having a drink. Like people say about Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage, right? Boris Johnson, I think, is a bit more of a showman in person. I don't think he's exactly the same as he is on screen. I've, I've met him a few times. I, I, I think there are two personas there. Uh, Nigel Farage, again, he puts on a bigger persona. Um, in person, he can be quite... Well, let's just leave that. But but uh, what I've met of Donald Trump so far is that, you know, it's the other way around. He puts on a showman on camera, but in person, he's much more human, much more personal. What, are, what sort of reception have you got? Have you met many Harris supporters out here? Only a few, literally like a handful. And you can always tell when you meet a Harris supporter. And, and is that, when you say you've only met a handful, is that from basically not really going far or, or have you been through quite a bit you know quite a bit of America right now that you can say that you've got a bit of like an honest sort of poll from your no, own no, eyes no because I've been around America but the people that I associate with are good people so I wouldn't really be around that many Harris supporters uh, only a few deceived ones but yeah I don't tend to mix in liberal circles I'm usually with either Christians or conservatives and, and so most people I've met out here have been Trump supporters. So that leads me into a into a good question actually about your average Trump supporter, because you know as we both seen with British media, Trump supporters are lambasted, they're mocked, they are they're often referred to as idiots, yeah. and actually sometimes even they're referred to as evil. Yeah. Tell tell me about your average Trump supporters that you've met. Well, it's just ordinary people, right? I think. Most ordinary people in the West are conservative in their values. Like they love their family, they want to protect their family, they want to protect their, their community and their nation. And, and then after that, they want to help the rest of the world. But you have to start at home before you can go abroad. And I think that's all very common sense that most people believe it's the far left liberals who don't necessarily care about home. And I think they look better by saying they care more about abroad, whether that's like foreign literally or in some metaphorical sense. And there's a, there's a growing, you know, if they call it the work mind virus, there's a growing, growing mental illness of breaking down what it means to be a person, you know, whether it's shaving off your hair or dyeing it blue or pink or, or chopping off your genitalia or taking chemical castration, puberty blockers, whatever. There's, there's a disconnect from the human aspect of our being. Like this, God created us, created us in his image and Christians see that as we call it in Margot Day, we're made in the image of God. And there's something about the woke mind virus that wants to separate us from that image, wants to distort that image. And in fact, probably wants to take over that image and make gods of ourselves in some way, which goes all the way back to Genesis in the Garden of Eden, where you know the snake whispers in Eve's ear and says, You can pretty much make a god of yourself, you know, eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, do what you like. And that's what the liberal movement is all about. Um, and so when they see us, or when they say that they see us as evil, or well, they see us as, you know, they say it's hate speech when we disagree with them, or they say words of violence. They're just trying to shut us down and silence good and, and silence truth and silence beauty because they want chaos, they want ugliness, and they want distortion. And so it's not about us, it's about them. They're projecting quite a lot of the time. You know, Lawrence always says uh, they are the very thing they accuse you of, and I think quite often that is the case. Yeah, I do, often I do. Because, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an openly biased journalist. I think that's one of the things that I, some people actually appreciate about the fact that I don't hide my bias. No, I, am, I, I like Trump. I think he's the best thing for the United Kingdom. But I, do you echo my sentiments when I say I, I tend to pity people on the left? Because I do think, I think people are inherently good. We're flawed. But I don't think people go, do you know, I don't think they wake up and go, I'm going to be evil today. Do, do you think that well, these people are mistaken? They're, they're, they're deceived. They, yeah, they've they're got it wrong either. rather they're, than they are wrong. They're misguided, but to a core level. So you can see the difference. When, when the left call the right garbage, right? when Joe Biden says Trump voters are garbage, what did the right do? Well, they dress up in garbage bags, or as we call them, rubbish bags, right? And and they get their garbage Incorrect trucks. Incorrect English. They get their garbage <laughs> trucks out, or their or their bin bin man trucks out, and, and and they make a joke of it and laugh it off. That's what the right does. When the right says something that the left dislikes, that sort of screeching and gnashing of teeth, which is like what we hear from the scriptures of demonic activity, right? So let's say Kamala wins. 
Let's not say that. <laughs> your, your eyes when I said that were, oh, good God. Where do I go then? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say she wins. Yeah. One, where do you think it all goes? You know, where, where the path the country goes down? Yeah. Or rather in the world? And, and two, what's the thing you're worried about the most when it comes to her policies? Look, if Kamala gets in, it's all over. This is it. The West is over. And the West is dying. It has been for over 100 years now. People will think I'm being dramatic, but look at any, any demographic shift or any trajectory that monitors wealth, happiness, you know, fruition, whether it's spiritual or, or otherwise, the West is on a downward trend. And the Marxists have essentially taken over, but Marxism will not last forever. The Islamists are taking it, the Mohammedans are taking over too. And so what was Christendom will become hell, unless the, the tide is stemmed. So most of Europe, most of Western Europe has fallen and the UK looks like it's fallen too. America still has a fighting chance. This may very well be the last stand, the last stand for Christendom. If Kamala gets in, she's already importing millions of illegal immigrants and just making them legal like that without any due process. Just you know, we saw this with the Venezuelans, just with you know, and uh, and the Haitians. Like, well, they're not le illegal because we've classified them as something else. That doesn't change the fact they enter the country illegally. Um, and so, if she ships over millions more. They will all be indebted to her and her party. And therefore, there is no democratic election ever again. So the Republicans cannot get back into, into office. And we've seen the dire results of that, the, the liberal policies and, and the Marxist policies of the Democrats, which of course, let's not forget, was the party of slavery, is the party of, of, of death, abortion. Uh, we'll see more killing of Americans in this country, so so more abortion, so Americans stop having children and killing their own children at the same time as these Mohammedans and other illegals will keep coming in and having more children, so America's demographics will change just as Europe has changed. And at that point, who's left to fight back? Or how can they fight back democratically? Americans historically have been willing to fight back properly in a way that we haven't really in England. The French have and other parts of Europe have, but we, typically speaking, we don't revolt. We have occasionally, but we don't generally speak it. Um, so maybe the Americans will end up in a civil war, but again, that's not pretty, that's not good, no one wants that. Uh, so I think if Kamala gets in, all hell's gonna break loose in the, in, the, in the long term. In the short term, it will just be more indoctrinating of children in schools and, and breaking up of families and, and head cackling on their right and center. Um, but if Trump gets in, we have a chance. We have a fighting chance. Would you say she has any redeeming qualities? Yeah. Well, on on my campaign trail, I've spoken to people you know around around the states and said, look, so you said you, you support this per this candidate. Is there anything you actually think that this candidate is good for though? So I spoke to some Harris supporters, and um, I said, look, okay, so you don't like Trump, but was there anything in his last presidency that you thought he actually did all right? Yeah. The one that I got the most was, well, actually, I thought his farm policy was good. Yeah. We didn't see many wars. Is there anything that you can say, well, do you know what, Kamala, yeah, we really don't want to win, but fair play, she's she's good at that. No, so Trump's foreign policy was good. He is the only world leader in, in the West in a long time that hasn't started a new, law, a new war or been invested in war. Um, his foreign affairs is that we should have a peaceful world, which is a pretty good foreign affair. Um, you know, he got North and Korea, North and South Korea talking again. He pretty much brought peace to the Middle East, which is all things that have been very difficult for a long, long time. Um, his executive order on anti-stereotyping was one of the best pieces of legislation I've ever seen. That pretty much outlawed critical race theory by saying you cannot stereotype based on race, gender, sexuality, all these things that the, the left should love. But of course, they didn't love it because he brought it in. His policies were great. The policies of the Biden administration have been, what, leaving billions of dollars worth of weapons in Afghanistan, um, uh, uh, trying to allow prisoners to trans themselves at the expense of the taxpayer, um, open borders, crime is up, poverty is up. Uh, the policies are not good. People don't like her because of her policies, and they don't dislike Trump because of his policies. They dislike Trump because of his character, but they don't truly look at the character of, of Kamala and Biden. You know, the, the fact that Joe Biden goes around sniffing children is, is kind of is weird if at uh, best. And chewing them now. Yeah, and chewing them now. It's like, what are you doing? But it's weird at best, but uh, dodgy at worst, right? 
Um, and, and the reason that people vote for Kamala is because she's a woman and Indian, black. I don't, I don't even know what ethnicity is, but, but her, her ethnicity and her gender are the reason that people vote for. That's not a reason to vote for a world leader. That's a stupid reason. It's foolish. And it's, it's identity politics, it's Marxism, and people have been pushed into that box of, you must vote for that, that black slash Indian whatever person, or that woman, otherwise you're a bad person. It's like, no, you're a bad person if you vote for them because of that. Vote for the orange man. <laughs> don't, don't vote for the black or Indian or whatever. Vote for orange. <laughs> yeah, vote for orange. Okay, so that's Kamala out of the way. Mm. Let's talk Trump. Okay. What's the one policy, if he gets elected, you know, there's still a few days to go, What's the one policy you're most excited to see? The best thing he did in his last presidency was uh, install sound people to the Supreme Court. And that meant that Roe v. Wade got repealed from, from the federal level and, and from, thanks to Dobbs it got pushed down to the state level. And therefore abortion is not a national right. No one has a right to kill their child. So he's already done amazing good for life. Um, in his next presidency, I think the most important thing you could do on day one would be to close the borders, to stop the stem of people flooding over illegally and changing the demographics of the country so rapidly. Uh, for, the, for the sake of Americans, that would be a good thing that you could do to start off with. I do like this music in the background. It's quite good. I hope it comes to the bottom. <laughs> oh, it's throwing me that. Is, um, oh, I have another one. So, America, biggest country in the world, most powerful nation, arguably. What happens here does affect the rest of the Anglosphere and the Western Hemisphere. What sort of impact do you think it'll have on the UK? Because we've talked about already that, you know, we've got we've got Starmer in. We're uh, we're moving ever closer towards communism. Do you think he can either mitigate, slow down, or stop that in the UK? No, um, that's up to us. We have to find a way to do that. I don't know how because we don't have any right-wing people that we can vote for. Um, we have the UK Independence Party. So UKIP, as far as I can see, UKIP is the only one that is conservative, the only party that is Christian, the only party that says, you know, we believe in Britain, fuck the British, and all things that should make common sense. Um, but it's about getting people to know they can break the two-party system, they don't have to vote for Conservatives or Labour. We had a bit of that last time around with reform, but of course reform turned out to be just as moist as the others, uh, which is a great shame, but I saw this coming, but people put too much hope in one man, Nigel Farage is just a man. Um, they idolised him and then they saw the mistakes of that. Uh, I don't know how we can stem the tide. I mean, having Trump in office will stem the tide a little bit because he'll push back against things that are on a global level. But, and, and having Kamala in would mean, mean that the UK and the US would collude, such as we've seen leaked plans that they want to ban Twitter, right? they want to ban Elon Musk's X, and they're, they're willing to work with the European Union to do that, even though we left the EU, and so... We left well, the EU, I'm, I'm still waiting. Yeah, but it's on us. I don't know how we do it, but we have to find a way. But it, at least we'll have a good ally in the White House. Well, it's, you know, you mentioned you mentioned Farage there. People often compare him and Trump. Yeah. <laughs> well, that kind of answers my next question. Do you see it? No, I don't trust Farage as far as I can throw him. He's all about himself. He's a self-interested career politician. Like he has fought the good fight in terms of UK independence. He has kept that conversation going, which has been fantastic, and I thank him for that. But he's all about getting himself into that place. He wants to be part of the establishment, part of the elite. He wants to be welcomed into the nice gentlemen's clubs. And he wants to be, you know, in that environment. This is why he's stopped saying things that were sound. And he's played, he plays a very careful game. You know, he's, he's even gone as far as to say he, could, he would not support mass deportations. Like, then what's the point of you? Literally, just another Conservative MP. Get out or do something. It's quite funny that you call him another Conservative because they don't conserve anything, do right. they? So do you think he's maybe misleading Trump with how close he's gotten to him, or do you think Trump actually sees something we don't? Because they seem to be quite quite tight. Well, I mean, Farage has been, over the last few years, Farage has been the only one who's spoken out 
in, in rhetoric that sounds like he's for Britain first, right? Since he's got into power, it seems that's not the case. But that's the rhetoric that he was using throughout. So of course, Trump would see someone and think, okay, he's doing similar work to what I'm doing. That's, that's great. It's just a shame that uh, he hasn't followed through. And, you know, Trump, Trump's one man. And Trump and Vance are two men. They are. The Republican Party is much bigger than one man, really. Yeah. What sort of politicians in, in the Republican Party you know, excite you politically and do you think are going to have a real major impact? So, J.D. Vance looks good from what I've seen so far. I know he looks like he might be the next presidential candidate for 2028, is it? Uh, but the Republican Party in general doesn't excite me. I see lots of rhinos, Republicans in name only. They're not very conservative. They are quite liberal. I was watching the Republican National Convention recently. They had a, a Hindu woman praying and saying, you know, we all pray to one true God or something, and everyone's bowing their heads. I'm like, what are you doing? This is, she's not praying to Christian God. This is, this is paganism. Why are you supporting this? They had uh, Rose, what's her face on, some hip hop chick with the tattoos and stuff, and who was a former stripper or whatever was speaking. It's, it's, it's not great what I see coming out of the Republican Party. But uh, again, it's the least worst option at the moment, unfortunately. There is no conservatism in the West anymore. There's no right-wing politics, but maybe that's to come.